We finally made it, ladies and gentlemen. Half a decade of Grand Summoners Global. And the anniversary has been revealed. And there's a lot of exciting stuff here to unpack from new units to a new forever summon, alongside some details about the live stream that will be coming out in a few days, actually. So let's not delay any longer. Let's get into all this news because I'm pretty excited. First and foremost, as you saw in the thumbnail of this video, on the 7th, which at the time of recording this video will be literally tomorrow, we'll be getting another forever summon. However, with this forever summon, new Phantom Sniper units join Join the lineup. Now, I'm assuming this means all of them. Priscilla, Simon, Volti, Dark Harto, Volti LR, Water Priscilla are all now in the Forever Summon. Thank God. You guys don't understand how much I was, quote unquote, suffering from success. I was literally at a point where there was no unit that I could necessarily obtain from the Forever Summon that was necessarily new. So I'm really happy about this. I'm pretty sure a lot of my vets that have been playing the game for a long time are going to be really happy about this. I'm pretty sure you guys are too, because this is just more characters to it and it doesn't actually say it may say in game in a few days how long this forever summon will last but i would assume maybe a month so yeah if you're missing any of these characters go for them i might make an updated forever summon video you guys tell me down below if you want to see that or not alongside that we're going to be having the regular login bonuses that we usually have i don't know if you guys can really see it but every single day we're going to be getting 10 crystals so pretty nice and we'll also be getting the fifth anniversary daily quest this thing is a scam it says you can get lb stones and all this other stuff front but i myself it's never happened to me i haven't experienced that but make sure you do this every day it's really great just for the extra rewards and crystals and all that on the 9th we have the grand summoners fifth anniversary live stream which says that there will be a q a with the gs producer yama p the man himself i think in the official discord server you can actually go in there and there's a channel called live stream questions and if you want to ask a question i'm pretty sure you can just type a question in that and see what happens next on february 17th we have the main story act four begins and as you see here that is Earth Rosetta alongside her true weapon and her equips and also half stamina plus two times XP. We'll also be getting a main story celebration login bonus, which will be featuring all of this stuff. Pretty normal. And main story celebration rewards and quests that features all of this. This is probably more so from the event shop and also like mission rewards. And then finally, we have the Phantom Sniper Saga comes through the side stories, which is actually pretty huge. Earth Rosetta though, right? That's kind of... Uh, I don't know how people feel about that. I think a lot of people are probably just gonna be like, oh, skip alert, you know what I mean? But I hope this isn't the only thing that comes out. I'm not saying like Earth Rosetta is bad or anything, but would you really say she has the potential to be an Annie unit? I don't know. I feel like they definitely got something cooking up in the stew. They have to, bro. They have to. Let's talk about the girl Earth Rosetta real quick for everybody that doesn't know what she does. Earth Rosetta is gonna be the first unit that has Magia Drive Unlimited and Global. Magia Drive Unlimited is similar to that of just regular Magia Drive, but with a few more twists. As you guys know, in order to activate Magia Drive currently, you just have to use Vox or Thetis or one of the Blood Knights. You go into the True Art, they activate their Magia Drive. Well, it's pretty much exactly the same with Earth Rosetta, but now, if you fulfill a condition, she will go into Magia Drive Unlimited. The way how you activate Magia Drive Unlimited on Rosetta is by using her art twice. If you use it twice, then it activates into Magia Drive Unlimited for the duration of your current Magia Drive. So if you only have 50 seconds on the Magia Drive, you're only going to be in Magia Drive Unlimited for 50 seconds. It does not refresh the timer. So with that out of the way, let's actually talk about what this does for her kit. So as you see here, there's a lot of text. Don't worry, I'm going to walk you through it. First and foremost, skill increases your RKH by 20. Your art is going to be able to reduce the enemy's earth resist by 30% if you're not in Magia Drive. If you are in Magia Drive, it will reduce the enemy's earth resist by 30% still. However, like I just mentioned before, if you activate this art twice during Magia Drive, you will activate Magia Drive Unlimited. Then that goes into the true art. In the true art, the very first time you use it, you're going to go into Magia. The second time you use it, if you're still in just regular Magia Drive, you're going to deal 40,000% earth damage magic. And then for 20 seconds, you increase all allies' equipment CT and magic damage by 50% pretty good buffs there and then if you're in magia drive unlimited however you get a 80 000 percent earth damage magic and then for 20 seconds you increase allies equipment ct recovery and magic damage by 50 percent and in terms of her passives which also correlate to her magia drive you have increased attack by 100 percent during magia drive unlimited you double damage multipliers of normal art and true art and increase damage to water enemies by 50 percent and finally we have increased allies accuracy by 30 percent now that is her kit so yes you will want to have her and Magia Drive Unlimited for the most part. That's where you're going to be getting the most use out of her. However, I don't really like Magia Drive Unlimited because it makes the one weakness of the Blood Knights super apparent. 
And what is that weakness, ladies and gentlemen? It's the fact that they are slow. Blood Knight characters are transformation characters, but they require a lot of arc gauge in order to get going. And I say a lot, but I don't really mean like a ton of arc gauge compared to, you know, what we see with super awoken units. <clears throat> Looking at you, Sword Demon Berwick. This character, for one, she has to go into Magia Drive, okay? Once you're in Magia Drive, you're gonna be having that for 180 seconds, but you also consumed 200 arc gauge right then and there. You don't have any more arc gauge. And as you saw with the passives, there's nothing that's gonna be giving her arc gauge in her kit by default. If you want arc gauge in your kit by by default, you actually have to run her true weapon, which is a five star magic, which does give you some more damage and also lowers the image magic res. The main thing is you increase your own arts by 50 when you go into Magia Drive. So let's say you have a true weapon on, you go into Magia Drive, you have 50 arc gauge, and then you have to arch in with the team. You now need another 200 to go into your art twice so you can activate Magia Drive Unlimited because you're going to want those extra modifiers during longer forms of content. And then finally, you can go back into your true art, which means that thing is a nasty, a a nasty, a mean 600 art gauge just for one unit, which I will say is perfectly fine. It's not really like that's a insane number, an insane amount of art gauge to hit. For the characters we have nowadays, that's very easily obtainable. But that is something that I myself don't like. I know that's something that a lot of other people don't like, wasting so much time just building that character up whenever you could possibly use another character and just go faster. But in terms of Earth Rosette's viability, I think she's going to be pretty good, but mainly in sustain. Like, these types of buffs and everything are really pushing that sustain agenda. I myself think the magic damage is a little too low. I would much rather that have been like 100% damage up to the whole team. Especially considering that we have damage buffers and magic damage buffers in the game, like, like Santa Rimuru and Summer Lisa. I know she's not supposed to be filling that nuker type of role, but still, you know, I myself would have liked that to have been 100% magic damage up with the 50% equipment CT recovery, but maybe that would have been too much. What I'm really more so interested about is what exactly the best is gonna look like is the banner gonna be good is the banner gonna be bad or how exactly did they be doing this to sell earth rosetta to us that's my thoughts with the entire anniversary that we currently know i don't think this is everything even though like in the discord it did say like part one part two i think this is more so just part one and part two of the information i don't think this is actually like part one and part two of the anniversary if it is then a i just ate my words yeah i feel like there's definitely more there has to be more. there's no way this is it if it is then oh that's it's not too great for the five year anniversary, but what can you do, right? Either way, though, fam, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you all again for coming out. It's been your boy P. Don't forget really to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed. Also, if you enjoyed this video, I highly recommend you check out either one of the videos popping on your screen right now. Great content, guarantee you love them. And oh, yeah, one more thing don't forget to drink water.